What's happening, people? Good morning. Welcome to Pray First. It is so good to be here with you guys. Everybody hop in and get on. We got a big ride ahead of us today. We've been talking about the parable of the lost son, uh, the lost sheep, the lost coin, mostly the prodigal son. Uh, from the prodigal's perspective, from the older brother's perspective, from the father's perspective, all of this is found on my page. You can go back on my page and watch it. Uh, we talked about yesterday that you are precious to God. And he uses the parable of the sheep and the shepherd. That Who wouldn't leave the 99 to go after the one, the one precious sheep uh, that has strayed out from under the father's roof or household or away from the father's love and protection. How are you guys doing out there today? If you're joining us live, you know the rules around here. And if you're joining us brand new, this is an interactive thing we do called Pray First. If you're here live, hashtag live. That's hashtag pound. Like Glory said yesterday, it's also the number symbol. Uh, but today we're going to call it hashtag live. If you're here pre-recorded and you think, ah, there's no reason to, um, uh, to be a part of this or interact with this because they're not going to see it, that's not true. We see it all the time. So hashtag pre-recorded. Uh, share it on your page. That's the most important thing you can do right now is share this out on your page. So find a share button. That's exactly what I'm doing. When I'm looking down at my page right here, I'm sharing it out so my friends can see it. Make sure you make it public so everybody can see it. And also the last thing I want to do as far as little housekeeping before we get started is welcome our new uh, viewers, our new family. Some of you are about a week old into the Pray First family, and we love you guys. I missed you guys last week while I was out of town. I came back yesterday, and I'm back for a while. So let's just get this thing started by liking and hearting. Guys, you see what our family's doing right there? They're telling you new folks, and they're telling everybody, we're glad you're here. So go crazy on the hearts and likes. I'm talking about nuts. You don't just hit a heart and a like. So let me put you through Welcome 101. We tear those buttons up. -da 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 -da. Okay, I got to get jumped into this. If you missed You Are Precious yesterday, I want you to go back on my page, Pastor Doug, and watch that. Uh, today we're going to talk about the fact that you are valuable. Hashtag valuable. So hashtag live, hashtag pre-recorded, hashtag shared, because I know you've shared this out already. But you are valuable. Not only are you precious... God used the sheep shepherd analogy yesterday to show us that. Today he's going to show us we have great value. Luke chapter 15 verses 8 through 10 says this. It's the parable of the lost coin. There's three parables in Luke chapter 15. The parable of the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son. Jesus goes on to say, What woman having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin? She has ten silver coins. If she loses one coin, does not light a lamp. Sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it. Everybody still out there? Everybody good? I'm being told I may have lost broadcast. I want to make sure I didn't do that. It looks like all of you are still out there real good. Uh, that, that'd be my wife. Everybody says shout out right now to my wife who just told me I, we lost the broadcast, but it wasn't that. So hashtag Brandy Bell. Uh, <laughs> if you're wondering why I just got up. What woman wouldn't sweep the house, light a lamp, and when she finds it, she calls all her friends and her neighbors, to get neighbors together saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner. Say one sinner. Likewise, just as the woman who had ten coins but lost one, lit a lamp, swept the floor until she found it. In other words, she didn't stop until she found what she had lost. He says, likewise, I say to you, this is Jesus speaking, who has been from God, who came from God, who stepped out of heaven onto the pages of earth and history. Likewise, I tell you, I've been there. There is joy in the heaven over the presence of the angels and God, over one sinner, over one child who comes home. So Jesus uses this coin analogy to indicate value. Coins indicate value, monetary, value, worth. He uses a silver coin here specifically to share value, and I'll tell you a little bit about why silver in just a few moments. He uses a woman in this parable because he's using that to represent the Holy Spirit. Woo! Come on now. How many times have you joked and said, my Holy Spirit's talking to me, and that's really your wife over there uh, you know, telling you, here's how you feel. Here's what you think. 
here's what to do. And at first you're kind of like, I know what to do. I know how to feel. I know what to think. I don't need your help. But then eventually, quite often, guys, what we find is, is, and I know she's watching. She knew what she was talking about. But the reason is, so many times, is women are more in touch with their feelings. Now, I know that's not the case always, but he uses a woman to indicate the Holy Spirit in this one. So I want you to notice something in the three parables of the sheep, the coin, and the lost son. In the first parable, he uses the analogy of a shepherd. And Jesus says, I am the shepherd. In the third parable, he uses the analogy of the father, the father who loses a son. He's talking about God the Father. In this second parable, he uses the analogy of the woman, the Holy Spirit. In other words, in these three parables, all three of them are searching earnestly for you, love you dearly, think you're precious, think that you are valuable, and they are missing something. And what they're missing is you. And they're looking for you, and they're frantic for you. Now, come on, let's go back to the woman thing for just a minute. All God's men out there who are married or have a significant other, I want you to hashtag thank God for women. Uh, women, for the most part, are more in touch with their feelings. I know it's not, again, it's not the overall case. Uh, for example, a man and a woman get together. And the man marries the woman and he loves the woman. The woman loves the man and she starts digging into his past and she finds out that the, her man was left by his parents and raised by wolves. And this woman starts picking at that feeling, you know, tapping on that nerve and saying, baby, I bet you were hurt when your parents left you <coughs> and you were raised by wolves. And he says, oh, no, 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 no. I like the wolves. Me like the wolves. Oh, me spirit wolf animal. You know, man, don't connect all that. And she says, no, baby, I think that you were hurt when... Uh, when when your parents left you and you were attacked by the wolves and, 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 and raised, not attacked, raised by the wolves. And what she's doing is, is she's taking a memory and she's taking a feeling and she's bringing them together. And those wires are in men's head, but they're not connected. It takes a woman to connect memories and feelings. We have memories and sometimes we have feelings, but to put them together, it gets kind of crazy. So she says, I bet that hurt you. Oh, it didn't hurt me. I bet that hurt you. I bet that didn't. No, that didn't hurt me. I bet that hurt you. I bet that didn't hurt me. And ah! we feel, feel something like, what was that? That was pain. And, and the woman says, well, just calm down, baby. That's called a feeling. So the Holy Spirit is someone, when you study him, we notice that he deals with emotion. He deals with pain. He deals with joy. He deals with feelings. Hashtag Holy Spirit deals with feelings. For example, joy. It's a fruit of the Spirit. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, that's the fruits of the Spirit. That's the fruit of the Spirit. It also says that we can grieve the Holy Spirit. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. That's a feeling. James chapter 4, verse 5, Do you not know that the Spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously for us? Do you not know that the Spirit who yearns for us? This woman had ten coins, yet she yearned for the one that she lost. James 4, 5 says, the spirit who dwells in us, the spirit who is inside of us, yearns, has a feeling of jealousy. Not jealousy for what you can do for him, but jealousy for what he can do for you. He is jealous for me. He is jealous for me, not for what we can do for him, but what good he can do for us. Uh, my wife, Brandy, made a great statement in our worship services. She's our worship pastor at Cross Point Church this past weekend. She said, jealousy is when you long for something that is yours. Envy is when you long for something that is someone else's. That's a big statement. The reason the shepherd yearned for the sheep was because it was his. The reason the woman searched everywhere for the coin was because it was hers. The reason the father was desperate to bring home the young man is because it was his son. You are precious. You are valuable. God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are yearning and searching for you. It doesn't matter how many coins he has. This woman had ten, but she yearned for the one that was not with her. 99 sheep. The shepherd had a hundred sheep, but one was missing, and he yearned 
for the one. Jesus is making this analogy, this parable, to explain to you that in heaven, God yearns for you. He is looking for you. He is jealous for you. The Holy Spirit turns on a lamp, on the, turns on the light, so that we can find our way back home. There's another thing you need to know about coins. Coins have images of their rulers on them. Coins have images of their rulers on them. Remember, the Pharisees asked Jesus, should we pay the Roman tax? And Jesus says, whose face is on the coin? They said, Caesar. Jesus said, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God what is God's. Can I ask you something today? If the coin has the ruler on the coin, the image of the ruler on the coin, whose image is on you? Give to God what belongs to God. He is jealous for you. He yearns for you. He doesn't yearn for something that doesn't belong to him. He yearns for you. He's not envious. He is jealous for me. The value of anything. Now, this is important. My wife also taught me this. See how much Holy Spirit is wrapping up in my wife's part to me? My wife taught me this when she was in real estate, that the value of anything the value of anything, it doesn't matter what the estimated value is, it doesn't matter what the blue book value is, it doesn't matter what the asking price is. The value of anything is determined by what someone is willing to pay for it. The value of anything is determined by what someone is willing to pay for it. And God paid his son's blood. God paid his son's life for you. Woo! <laughs> All coins. Come here, come here, come here. Come here, come here. In other words, when God paid his son's blood for you, all the coins got the same value. You're not a 50 cent piece and someone else a quarter and someone else a dime and then your old brother's a nickel and your husband's a penny or your old ex-husband's a, a plugged nickel, a plugged penny, whatever. Uh, Every coin, when he died for you and the imprint of the ruler was placed on you, all ten coins have the same value. God paid his blood for you. All coins have the same value. But in this story, in this story, even though all coins have the same value, she was looking for each coin. She was counting them. This has the same value. This has the same value. This has the same value. And she went through and she found one of my valuables is missing that might be you today give to god what is god's your valuable i want to read you a quick story that was in um, reader's digest really really long time ago hashtag reader's digest how many y'all know what reader's digest even is i don't know in my house that was something we read it was a thing that had jokes in it articles in it posts in it it was kind of like the social media that came in print it was about the size of a tv guide and it's called reader's digest but i want to read you a story that I heard as a young man in the church I grew up in and read in a Reader's Digest. So listen up, here's how valuable you are. I first learned of Johnny Lingo when I was visiting the island of Hawaii for work as a reporter. It seems Johnny Lingo had quite a reputation. Everyone I spoke to knew Johnny and spoke highly of him. If I needed anything, I was told to go find Johnny. If I needed a place to stay, Johnny could put me up, since he had built himself a five-bedroom house and unheard of luxury at the time. If I wanted fresh vegetables, his garden was the greenest. If I wanted fish, he could show me where they were biting best. If pearls was what I sought, his middlemanship could bring me the best deals. Get Johnny Lingo to help you find what you want and let him go to the bargaining, said the islander. He'll earn his commission four times over. Johnny knows the value and how to make a deal. His son, playing nearby, who heard what was said, started shrieking with laughter. <laughs> Hush, the father told his son. Johnny Lingo is the sharpest trader this part of the Pacific. And the boy almost choked and rolled off the steps of the porch. What's going on, I demanded. Everybody around here tells me to get in touch with Johnny Lingo, and then everybody around starts breaking into laughter. Is this some kind of trick, a wild goose chase? Are y'all trying to make me the village idiot or what? Let me in on the joke. There's no joke. When I tell you to see Johnny, it's good advice. Then tell me why everyone's laughing and snickering, I ask. Did you tell him, Papa? Poppy, did you tell him about Johnny's wife? <laughs> the little boy laughed. The child burst into laughter and fled into the house as his father swatted at his bottom. So why, I asked, does everybody mock Johnny Lingo? They like to laugh. 
Johnny is the brightest, he is the quickest, he is the strongest young man in all the islands, and for his age, he is the richest. So they like to laugh at him best. But if he's all you say and everybody says, what is there to laugh about? Only one thing, sir. Five months ago at fall festival time, Johnny came to the main island and found himself a wife, and he paid eight cows for her. Hashtag eight cows. I knew enough about island customs to know and be thoroughly impressed. Two or three cows would buy a fair to middling wife. Four or five cows would buy a highly satisfactory wife. Goodness, I said, eight cows. She must be a beauty that will take your very breath away. She's not, mm, she's not ugly, he conceded. But the kindness person can only say that Sarita is quite plain. She was three months past marriage when Johnny came, and no one had offered a single cow for her, unless you count the widower, Ben Paget, who is older than her father. He put up one cow and, and might have gone as much as two, but she couldn't stand the sight of him, so her father withdrew the offer. Old Sam, her father, was beginning to be afraid that she was going to be left on his hands. But then, how did he get eight cows for her? That is an extraordinary number. But then, but then he got eight cows for her? Never been paid on the islands before. Did you notice the girl who brought the fruit this morning? Woohoo! Of course you did. The tall one, the pretty one, she's magnificent. She's the most beautiful girl on the island. She brought her father seven cows with four men bidding. Yet Johnny paid eight for his plain wife. I said it would be kindness to call her plain. She's quite skinny and she doesn't have many endowments and she walks with her shoulders hunched and her head ducked and she, she tries to hide from herself. Her cheeks have no color. Her eyes never open beyond a squint. Her hair is a tangled mess and she's, she tries to run from her own shadow. She's frightened of her own voice. She was afraid to speak or laugh in public. She played... She never played with any other kids. They were quite scared of her, but she attracted Johnny. There's no denying that. The village has been open mouth ever since. They get a kick after remembering after ha, they get a kick out of remembering how Johnny, the sharpest trader in the islands, paid eight cows for a girl. Anyone who would have only given maybe one, two at max. Some, mostly women, say that he was blind to love. Others suspect trickery. Something was in the marriage cup that mingles Johnny's brain. Sarita's father was resigned to accepting one cow. Eight cows, it's unbelievable. So I went to meet Johnny, and when I met him, I said, I want a fish, I want vegetables, I want pearls. He said sober, and he said, and he asked me, do they speak of me much on the island? Yes, I said. They say almost nothing I might, uh, yes, they said, they say there's almost nothing I might want that you can't help me get. And do they speak of my wife? Yeah, that you paid eight cows for her, and they wonder why. Always and forever, when they speak of marriage settlements, it will be remembered that Johnny Lingo paid eight cows for Sarita. So that's my answer, I thought with disappointment. You did it for vanity? And then I saw her. Then I saw Sarita. She was the most beautiful woman that I had ever seen, not with the beauty of the girl who carried the fruit that now seemed cheap, common, and earthbound. This girl was lovely both inside and out. The dew-fresh flowers which she picked with her hands gave her lustrous black hair accents in the glow of her cheeks. The lifted of her shoulders and the tilt of her chin, the sparkle of her eyes, all spelled pride to which no one could deny her. And as she turned to leave, she moved with such grace and enchantment that it made her look like a queen. She, she, she's glorious. Who is she? That's my wife, Sarita, Johnny said. I stared at him blankly. Surely this was not the same person the islanders had talked about. Perhaps you wish to say she does not look like the others has described her, would you? She doesn't. I heard she was homely or at the very least nondescript. They all made fun of you because you let yourself be cheated by old Sam Caro. You think he cheated me? You think eight cows were too many? Soon it will be festival time and I will take Sarita back to the main island. She will see her friends and family again. Do you think anyone will make fun of us then? Not likely, sir, but I don't understand. How can she be so different from the way she was described? 
See, she has been away from the island for several months now. Much has happened to change her. Much in particular happened the day that she left. Do you ever think, he asked reflectively, what it must mean to a woman to know that her husband has met with her father to settle the lowest price for which she could be bought? And then later, when all the women talk as women do, they boast about what their husbands paid for them. One says two cows, maybe another says six. How does she feel when she's the woman who was sold for only one or two? This could not happen to my Sarita. I wanted Sarita to be happy, of course, but I wanted more than that. You say she's different from the way they remember her back on the island? This is true. Many things change a woman. Things that happen inside and things that happen outside. But the thing that matters most is what she thinks about herself. Back home, Sarita believed she was worth nothing. Now she knows she's worth more than any other woman on the island in history. Don't get me wrong. I wanted to marry Sarita. I loved her and no other woman. But he finished softly. I wanted an eight-cow wife. Let me tell you something, guys. You are valuable. You may believe the lies of the other islanders, but the truth is, Jesus paid a high price, the blood of himself, to seek you out. You can look around and see what others think about themselves, how valuable they think they are, and how valuable they think you are, but Jesus paid a great price for us because we're valuable. Think about it. God owns the cattle on a thousand hills, but it wasn't enough to buy you. So he shed his own blood. Let me pray for you. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray everybody out there understands that they're precious, they're valuable, and that whether or not they're a follower, a believer or not, or a person of faith or religion or church or not, God, you went to the cross to buy them. And you're the shepherd that's looking for the lost sheep, no matter how many sheep are in the pen. And that you are the woman who's looking for the lost coin, no matter how many coins are in the purse. And Father, you are the Father who is looking for the sons and the daughters who have walked away and who have periodically and maybe temporarily lived life unrestrained in some area. And you're inviting them to come home because they are precious and they are valuable. I pray that we would tilt our head, raise our shoulders, and walk with pride in knowing that we are eight cow saints. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. I got to get out of here. I love you guys. I love you. I love you guys. Uh, hashtag live if you're joining live. Hashtag recorded if you're joining recorded. Put your prayer requests, your praises in here. I'll come back through. I'll look at them. I will pray for you. I'll pray with you. Hashtag share. Don't leave this place without sharing this. Get this truth out there. Yesterday you shared like 75 times. I wonder if we can break 80 again. I hope you guys who did break 80 with me and gave me your addresses got your gifts. I love you so much. I'll see you tomorrow. Chop, chop. Got to get out of here. Ah! I say you, I say you, I say you an eight couch, saint.